here we are with assignment 17 from block one of Evolve Artists. This is a cat on a box, I guess, a cat on a cube. Maybe that works better. There's more alliteration there. So I'm just getting my cat ready on my um, easel, I guess. Well, I don't really have an easel. What I use is I have this um, flat, it's not really cardboard, but wooden board thing. <laughs> as you can see, that I taped the canvas onto and then I put it on a music stand because those things are super handy. They're um, flexible, they're adjustable, you can move them up and down. So if you're tired, you can sit down and you can keep painting. If you want to, you can stand up and paint as well. And I love using music stands. I never knew that you could use a music stand for this. I actually looked into some artist easels at first, but um, I hadn't really made a decision by the time that I signed up for Evolve Artist and the materials came and I was like, well, let's just do some makeshift stuff and see what I have around the house that could be used as a replacement for the easel until I make a decision. And I thought, oh, music stands would be great. And I actually double checked with Piper and she was like, yeah, you can use a music stand, that's fine. And so I used it and I was like, you know what? I don't think I need an easel. I could just use this music stand. <laughs> so I did. And actually that has been um, my attitude sort of for a lot of this is learning to repurpose items. For example, um, I, instead of buying one of those paintbrush holders, I found out that, you know what works really well as a paintbrush holder? Egg cartons. They're made out of this really kind of soft-ish paper material. And there's like four, I think it's four, four or six points, six points, because there's 12 eggs, right? There's six points in between, and you can literally just poke a hole in there and stick your paintbrush in there. The only problem, of course, is that when you have your paintbrush facing up, it tends, gravity tends to pull the paint down towards the, the lower part of the brush. I don't know what the exact technical term is for that, but it's a good idea for you not to let the paint get all the way to the bottom of the brush, the bristles, because then it's harder to wash out, apparently, and probably not very good for the brush. So that's the only downside to that. But you can always tilt your egg carton so that gravity doesn't pull it straight down if you want to. And um, anyways, so we're working on the cat. This is another one of the assignments that I saw on the website, it, the photos, because the Evolve Artist website has a whole gallery of the different assignments that you will be doing. And this is one that I saw on the website that I was like, oh, I really want to do that one. Because like I said, I like animals. So this is not really an animal animal, but it's a statue of an animal. And that's good enough for me. Um, it was a little tricky because I, as you can see, I'm not really super used to um, seeing as an artist yet. And there's this weird shape on the cat that represents the separation between the shadows and the lights. But it's, it's a little tricky to figure out where the where the tail is where the feet are although I think Kevin has said before that when you're painting you don't think especially for example if you're painting a portrait you don't think I'm painting an eye I'm painting a nose you think instead about the individual shapes um, shadows the edges the values the colors whatever if you're doing black and white then it would just be values if it was color you'd be thinking values and color but you don't think about it as oh, this is a nose, this is an eye, this is a leg, this is a tail. But I still kind of try to think in that way a little bit. Okay, here I am trying to do a bit of a soft gradient on the front shadow, which technically you're not supposed to do because according to the system that we're taught, blurry edges go in the back and in the front, all the edges should be sharp, for now at least, because that's, that's just the system that we're learning. So I did that wrong, whoops. Um, and then putting a little bit of a light on the front edge of the box really helps. So yeah, um, I decided to finish working on the box first before I tackled the cat because the cat is mentally a little tricky. So anyways, filling in the shadow for the cat. I, right now it doesn't look a whole lot like a cat. <laughs> I mean, there's the cat-ish um, silhouette, but the details aren't there yet. That's for gradients and reflections and highlights to bring out. So. But first, before we get to that, we have to fill in all the shadows. And there's like a, there's a tail that we have to bring out at one point, there's a back paw and then the front paw. Anyways, this is one of the more complex paintings, obviously. And it's also a portrait instead of landscape style, I think. So that's, that's a difference, which is nice. Um, yeah, I think cats are really interesting to paint, or at least cat statues, because they have such elegant shapes. I don't know what it is about the cat, but um, 
Yeah, so filling in all of the moderate shadows and then there's that really thin part of the right the paw of course and then the eye and the eyebrow um, I sped up this video obviously to 10 times the normal speed but I really took my time on this putting in there we go so now you've got okay kind of looks like a cat but it's a very two-dimensional cat so now we're putting in the gradients starting with the bottom paw because I decided to do the easy things first that back half of the cat was the most difficult and my final result was still not eh, not really perfect not even really close but anyways and then um, so the front of the cat is a little easier I decided to start with the parts that I obviously could figure out one of the things that the instructors say is when you're working on your painting of course we follow the steps that were given fill out the shadows and the, then the lights and then the gradients and then the reflections and highlights I kind of drew the tail in a little bit there as you can see so and the haunches um, I didn't do the foot right though that actually shouldn't I made the foot the back foot a little too short but anyways now that I look back on it um, it helped to just kind of draw in with a lighter color where those edges are supposed to be just for my own sake although I don't know if that was the right thing to do anyways um, back to what I was saying so the instructors often say that you should follow the process of course but then at the very at the end as you are getting near the end of the painting sometimes you get to a place where you're like hmm something doesn't look quite right except I'm not really sure where to fix it and that is the point where they say that you should just stop and that's it you know put your put your paint brushes down and then submit the assignment and you can ask the instructor at that point because if you don't know what's wrong and you keep trying to fix it you might actually fix something the wrong way so it was fine and then you changed it and now it's wrong and <coughs> if you don't know what's wrong you don't know how to fix it you're not really doing yourself any favors by continuing to to paint especially when you have the advantage of instructors who can tell you straight out what's wrong so Typically, you're supposed to do all the gradients before you do reflections and highlights, but here I just kind of <laughs> threw my hands up and I'm like, I'm just going to do what I see, and if I miss something, then I miss something. That's one of the things that I have a bit of a have a bit of trouble doing sometimes is seeing all of the places that I'm supposed to fix before moving on to the next step. So, for example. When we do reflections and highlights, we're supposed to also start from the darkest and then move our way to the lightest. So we start with the darkest shadow and then we're like, okay, are there any shadows here that need a little bit of a highlight? And then if yes, then we put in the highlight. Then we move on to the moderate shadow. Are there any moderate shadows that need to be darkened? Yes or no? And then you darken all the places that need to be darkened. And then it, the next question is, are there any places that need to be lightened? And then you lighten all the places that need to be lightened. But the problem with me is I always miss things. So I, I think I caught all of the places that need to be darkened and then I realized I haven't caught them all and then so on and so forth. So I often have to go back and you want to minimize doing that as much as possible because you don't want to keep dipping your brush into dark and then light and then dark and the light and then creating con contamination and the colors aren't, aren't as pure as they could be. One thing that I really liked about this cat though that I think I I did well and give myself a pat on the back for it, is the eyes. I think that I got the eyes correct this time. Um, it was just a mere, you know, swish of the brush, but I think I got the 3D-ness of that eye correct. Probably could have done a little bit more of the shadow maybe around the eye, but I think I got the shape correct. Whereas when I did the bird earlier, the other assignment, what was that, assignment 15 or something like that? The eye on that bird was terrible. And eyes matter a lot, whether it's for animals or for humans, it really changes the feeling of a painting when the eyes aren't correct. So. I'm glad I got the eyes mostly okay here. And then there's me struggling with the rest of the cat. That, the back of the cat, really. The back half of the cat really struggled with. I really struggled with that a lot. And that's okay, though. I, I've been thinking sometimes that maybe one of these days, after perhaps after I've done the Evolve program through, and I want to go back and revisit things, I might redo this painting just for myself, just so I can actually do a good job on it now that I know what I did wrong, I think, mostly. But for now, the instructors advise us not to redo assignments unless they tell us to, and they usually don't tell us to because they want us to have a sense of momentum, forward movement, and unless something's truly egregious, they're not going to tell us to redo it. So, yeah, I'm not redoing anything for now. Just maybe in the future, that's one of the things I might 
want, might be interested in doing, perhaps. Unless I have something more interesting to do, which is probably what's going to happen. Um, anyways, oh, and then aside from the eyes, another thing that I felt pretty satisfied with was the nose. You can barely see it here, but there's just like a faint indent where you can see the muzzle of the, is it called the muzzle? The nose of the cat, where you can see just the, the edge of the nose and it's kind of like a Y shape that goes down to its mouth. So I liked how I did that. I guess the head of the cat is all right. The back of the cat needs work. So anyways, but yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna redo this painting or not. Maybe I will. I mean, one of the nice things I think I mentioned in one of my earlier videos is going back and reviewing the basics. Like musicians never stop practicing their scales, even the pros and, or at least they shouldn't if they really wanna get good. They wanna keep their fingers limber. They want to keep scales and etudes, you know, these kinds of practice things. And I think working with values is one of those fundamental skills that artists probably should never stop practicing or reviewing or um, doing. So if I ever wanted to go back and do a black and white painting, I think this might be one of them. Anything with an animal in it. This one, and then also the birdhouse one, because seriously, that one was egregious, especially the eyes. Um, and then later there's another one with cats as well that I think I might redo um, if I ever actually redo them. Because the thing is, each one of these paintings takes anywhere from five to nine plus hours. The painting itself doesn't take that long, but the setup, the cleanup, and then also some, I always have leftover paint that I want to use in other ways. So when I finish using up the paint and then cleaning up, the total amount of time it takes is about anywhere from five to nine hours. So it is a bit of a commitment, at least for now, but maybe in the future as I get better at this, I'll get faster as well. So there's that. Um, anyways, so now we're just filling in the background, which is an extreme shadow, moderate shadow mixture, which is perfect because it doesn't, it contrasts with the, the light, the extreme light of the cat, but also doesn't blend in with the extreme shadow on the box. And there you have it, the cat with a kind of stumpy foot, <laughs> but the acceptable eyes and nose. And yeah, I kind of liked how this one turned out considering, and just I keep putting these finishing touches on this thing, don't want to stop, <laughs> but this is where you have to stop. Sometimes you just have to let it go and be like, all right, I'm done. This is it. This is the final. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Have, have a creative day and make something beautiful. See you next time.